This was the longest mixing session ever. Over 20 mixes across five months, 16 hours of work, and what started as 47 stems, finishing at around 165 stems that we went back and forth on with the producer. Listen to the before and after, and then we'll get into it. Why did this mix take so long? Attention to detail. I want to share with you exactly how I manage these revisions, updated stems, gain stage new production elements, and organize my session so when notes came into the fold and we had to change things to the mix, we could do it productively and effectively. So when it came to revisions, it was really important that I labeled sessions accordingly. So the way I label sessions isn't by version 1, version 2, 1.1, 1 1.2, 2.1, 2.2. .2. It is literally by the date. And this way, what happens is I can recall any of these sessions or elements from these sessions from particular notes that I get during a mix. Now, A means the first version for the day. And then if there's only a minor tweak to that, I put a B. So August 10A to 10B might've just been like a vocal up. And that's not a whole new mix, even though I might've done it on the 11th of August. It's just a tweak to that original 10A mix, which I made. So it's A is the first version, B is the second version of that day's mix. Um, and that's the first thing. Now, in terms of updating mixes, because we did go through so many revisions, sometimes the artist was requesting, hey, I really like the drums in version October 19A. So in order to bring those drums in, if you compress Option Shift I in Pro Tools, that brings up Choose File to Import Session Data From. And then what you can do is you can pull that in there, pre press Open, and then what you do is you match the tracks and then you delete which tracks you don't want to match. So I don't want to match any of them. Maybe I just want to match the snare. And basically if I click OK now, I'm not going to do it, but if I click OK, all the settings from my snare drums in that mix will import in directly into this mix. So I don't have to go around tweaking levels. I just get the exact mix setup that I had from that previous session. The next one is when I updated stems for production. There was a two-step process. So the first thing is I'd bring the stem in the next thing is, um, because I obviously have a series of processes on that channel, was level matching them. So it was as simple as finding like a loud phrase, looping it. And then when I'm looping it, I just observe the short-term loudness here in Insight and then loop the other version and then level match those clip gains to one another. Once I do that, I can actually command shift C and copy clip gain automation across into another channel, which is really important. So I kept all my automation between one channel to the next. I haven't got any compression on that vocal and it sits perfectly and it's nice and open and natural and not squashed. It is just every single quarter note I've been, how loud is this phrase? How loud is this phrase? Up, down, up, down, and until every phrase just rides out perfectly. Take a listen to this vocal in the mix. The next thing is when you get mixed notes, you don't want to fall into the trap of changing too many micro details that you lose the integrity of the mix itself. So one thing I rely on heavily during mix notes are using my VCA faders here for the lead vocal, the background vocal, the snare level I changed a little bit. Um, and the reason being is they, the client might ask, I want all the lead vocals up a decibel. And instead of going through 12 channels and bringing each one up and then potentially bringing one up a little bit too much or not enough or going between different sections and missing one and ruining the balance, I got VCA faders here. So lead vocals up, okay. Bring the lead vocal fader up. Bring the background vocal fader down. I brought the snare drum fader up slightly. And that way, the whole group of those instruments just get brought up or down accordingly. So there's a bit of an existential discussion I have here around mix revisions because it gets a bad rap amongst engineers. Engineers go, oh, you know, I had to do another revision or this client's bothering me or this, that, the other. And I know people in the comments are going to be saying things like that. I'm like, I would never do that. I cap it or at this many revisions or, you know, you're not doing your job if you can't do it in two mixes. And in my brain, it's like, no, you're not doing your job if you're not listening to your clients. And when you jump into an engagement with, for whether it's a mixing project or a mastering project, whatever it is, you expect, accept, so you accept the responsibility of taking that project full circle. That means 
whether or not it takes one revision and you finish it in an hour, or it takes 20 revisions and it takes you 16 hours. Guess what? You accepted that responsibility and it's not like you have to suffer through it. You can make it a positive experience for everyone, a learning experience for everyone, an experience where you strive to do something incredible and amazing and transformative through the action of those revisions, rather than just opening up the session going, 1DB up, done, send, and off. No, every single revision, if you're a mixing engineer or a mastering engineer or a producer, you should take with complete uh, creative intent. So if somebody sends you a mix revision for the vocals to be up two decibels, you need to ask, what are they trying to achieve with that? Not just that they want the vocals up two dB, maybe they want better clarity in the vocals. Okay, maybe they want the vocals to feel stronger on certain phrases or more rhythmic in certain areas. So sometimes it's not 2dB up they want it. Sometimes they want the vocals up, but for a certain cause. So it might be maybe the compressor's squeezing it a little bit too hard and it needs to breathe a bit more. Or maybe it's not bright enough and they just want it to have a little bit more presence in the top end. You have to take every revision with as much passion as possible to, for the actual project itself. And the reason why I'm sort of harping on about this is because we need to have a healthy relationship with our work no matter what. And we need to create positive experiences through some of the more challenging tasks we're handed with. And when it comes to doing a mixing session, you get notes back, you've got your ego attached to a little bit of your mixing and a little bit of your masters, which you put on, as in you send out to your clients and you need to break that down and take those revision notes or take those notes or, or comments from a client and build them into something constructive that you can go, wow, how will this, or how can this make this better? Or how can I make this experience better for the client so that we make a record that just absolutely shines? Because that is a real magic in engineering. And that is how I've found myself to win myself the favor of my clients in terms of become a team player, create a, how do I put it? Like a safe place for everybody to make incredible music is through that attitude. The old attitude, 10 years ago, me, Nicholas attitude would have been, oh my God, another revision, another email. Is this ever going to end? But that attitude from 10 years ago when I was starting out never served me. The attitude which does is the attitude that says this revision, shit, yeah, let's fucking get on it. Let's do it and make something amazing of it. And I'm hoping that through me sharing this experience with you, rather than just another quick mix tip, um, you guys can learn something, something valuable that you can take further than just any single kick drum you're ever going to EQ, but into the realm of a mixing interaction you have with a client. And when you have that interaction with a client, it's fruitful and you have an incredible time mixing a record with somebody that becomes a, a, a long time client, a, a good friend, a good you know relationship that you're able to make great records with because that's what we're in it for, creating great music. So with that, I'm going to leave it there because I could ramble on about this and try and inspire you to do as good as you possibly can when, it, when you're faced with revisions. But ultimately, um, everybody's on their own learning curve and everybody's going to take to this advice in different ways and extrapolate different meaning from it. And that's good. I don't want this to get too philosophical, but um, I'm going to leave it there. And until next time, take care.